Despite a disappointing start to the 2022 season, the lone bright spot WVU has had to look to has been the improvement of the offense. Let's take a look at the top five highest graded offensive players, according to PFF, for West Virginia in the second game of the 2022 season. Let's go! What's going on, Mountaineer Nation? Jordan Cruz back here with the Country Roads webcast. Before we get into this video, let me hit you with a quick reminder. If you would, hit that like button. That'll help this video's performance and help our future video's performances as well. And if you haven't already, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Helps us, helps you, helps get more of this Mountaineer football content out to Mountaineer Nation. And as always, link to our merch store in the video description down below. Get your Country Roads webcast hat, shirt, coffee mug, anything you want. Um, you can find it there in our store, and we appreciate you doing so as we continue to try and grow the Country Roads webcast community throughout Mountaineer Nation. That being said, let's get into it. All right, I know it hasn't been the start to the season that anyone thought would happen or wanted to happen, but I still want to continue, you know, talking about this Mountaineer team as the season progresses, of course. You know, we, we still love to follow the team, you know, despite – how bad things are and how bleak things look right now. And we're going to continue to do that throughout the season. And I'm going to try as much as possible to continue these series that I've started throughout the season. And one of those, of course, is the player grades. This is the video for the top offensive player grades from the loss to Kansas. So with no further ado, let's jump right in here at number five. The fifth highest graded player for the Mountaineers in the loss to Kansas was actually Jeremiah Aaron with a 68.1 offensive grade. Actually, you know, I was really excited to see Jeremiah Aaron. He was a guy that I was excited about when West Virginia signed him, especially after losing Winston Wright because I knew he was a guy that was, you know, faster, quick twitch, and can help you in, you know, on special teams and the kick return game and then also maybe some things you can do for him on offense. Um, unbeknownst to me until this week, he was injured in camp, you know, Neil Brown said, and that's why we didn't see him in the opener against Pitt. Was ready to go enough to get some snaps in this one, and you saw him serve as the team's kick returner. Uh, mixed results there. Didn't really see much targets at receiver, but the one target he did receive was a 14-yard reception on West Virginia's uh, drive to tie the game up. So I'm sure that's one of the reasons why he is one of the higher-graded offensive Mountaineers in this one. And coming in at number five with a 68.1 grade. Moving on to number four for the Mountaineers in this game, and that was tight end Brian Palindi with a 68.4 offensive grade. And, of course, all this, as we know, coming in the blocking game, that's where he's receiving these grades, wasn't targeted any in the passing game, I believe. Um, maybe once, actually. I think that the crossing route, a little mesh play JT Daniels tried to hit that a little miscommunication was on was uh, with him and Palinde. But other than that, I can't think of any other targets for Palinde. So, must have done a good job doing his job and, you know, knowing his assignments in the run game and, of course, pass protection as well. And he comes out with the 68.4 offensive grade for the Mountaineers in the game against Kansas. And then at number three, of course, a face I think that's going to be familiar as the series progresses, at least it seems that way, through two games. And that's C.J. Donaldson, the Mountaineer running back, coming out with a 73.0 grade in this one. You know, not as impactful, I guess, as far as total numbers that he was against Pitt in the backyard brawl in his debut, but he still looked good when he was in there. Um, and let's pull up his numbers here. I've got them, uh, yep, 13 carries, 48 yards, and the two touchdowns, I think, is what really stands out and, of course, gets his grade up really high. And Mountaineers really counted on him in short yardage a lot, and he came through, and then on the goal line as well, coming through with the two touchdowns. So not a bad, you know, follow-up performance to a good debut for Donaldson. You know, hopefully he's going to continue to find the end zone for the Mountaineers throughout the season. And if he does do so, he will continue to show up on these offensive grades and, you know, as one of the higher graded Mountaineer players. And this week he comes in at number three with a 73.0 offensive grade into the top two for the Mountaineers. And I'll tell you, both of these players are wide receivers and both needed to bounce back after the backyard brawl. And I thought they both did with really good performances. And the first one here at number two is Caden Prather, who came out of the game with a 77.5 offensive grade. Like I said, he needed to bounce back as well as, you know, the top graded player did. Caden Prather, you know, the Mountaineers forced their only turnover in the game in the backyard brawl. The only turnover they forced on the season to this point, actually, when they uh, got it, recovered a fumble from Pitt. And then, of course, Caden Prather, when they turned around and he accidentally fumbled a screen, you know, 
bad situation, but, you know, you hope to see him bounce back. And he did later in that game, you know, catching a nice screen pass and making some plays. But really I thought in this game against Kansas, we saw a little bit more of what he could do uh, making some plays down the field and things like that. And he was targeted a little bit more, and that was nice to see. And it ended up in a nice day for him, as you see here, as he finished the game with six catches for 79 yards. And the one that stands out to me, a uh, pass from JT Daniels that was tipped, and he went out and got it, you know, kind of similar to what Bryce Ford Wheaton did for the Mountaineers in, in week one when uh, JT Daniels' arm was hit on a third down in a cr critical situation. And Bryce Ford Wheaton just went and made a play and grabbed the ball. Caden Prather did a similar thing, but he caught the ball in stride and ran and gained about another 20 yards to put the Mountaineers in position to score and tie the game and send it to overtime. And that's just one of the many plays that he made in the game against Kansas. So just a tip of the iceberg for him. You know, he's still young and he has a lot of potential, and, you know, hopefully we start to see it more as the season continues. But I think this was a good start to it with a 77.5 offensive grade as the second-highest graded WV player in this game. And, of course, the top-graded Mountaineer, number one, Bryce Ford Wheaton, with an impressive 81.2 offensive grade and having a very impressive start to the 2022 season. And if it progresses, we're going to hear, you know, Blitnikoff talk. That's the type of debut he's off to. I saw a comparison between him and Jordan Addison's numbers last year. I think they had the same amount of touchdowns through two games, and I think Bryce Ford Wheaton may be ahead on yards. Don't quote me on that. not 100% sure. But in this game, really, I think the thing that stands out is, you know, we all know what happened in the backyard brawl, and he bounces back not only, you know, as the highest graded Mountaineer with an 81.2 grade, but with the best game to date of his career statistically as you see here, 11 receptions, 152 yards, and two touchdowns. And, you know, the combination of him and JT Daniels through two games on the 2022 season has uh, produced four touchdowns already just between the two of them. So that's good to see, and hopefully that continues. And that's one bright spot you can look to, you know, as we continue to progress through the 2022 season. I know things look bleak for the Mountaineers overall right now, but this offense has been exciting. That duo has been fantastic, and Bryce Ford Whedon has been great to start the season for the Mountaineers offense. So the Mountaineer offense humming to start, and that's good because you wanted if these guys would have chemistry, and I think it has produced even better than we could have hoped to this part in the season. You just got to hope it continues because it may have to be what picks the team up and gets some wins as the Mountaineer defense has been very – lackluster to begin this season you know the past three seasons it was the other way around sometimes the defense had to carry the offense and I think the offense may have to carry the defense some this season if West Virginia is going to be able to win any games and Bryce Ford Wheaton is going to be a big part of that and he's the highest graded Mountaineer with an 81.2 offensive grade that being said appreciate you guys for tuning into this video as always i um, going to try and do this you know throughout the season and like I said if you haven't already give us that thumbs up hit that like button that really helps the channel and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, of course. I'll have the defensive player video coming in the near future. Despite the struggles, we're going to be here to support this team as the season progresses. That being said, as always, I'm Jordan Cruz, and until next time, let's go Mountaineers.